In this series of videos, the difference between soil classification and soil description will be presented. This topic could hardly be described as one of the most exciting in soil mechanics. It is nevertheless an important one. We already know soil is a particulate material and most soils contain a range of particle sizes. The dominant particle size often dictates the engineering behaviour of the soil and therefore it is essential that we can classify a soil so we get an indication of its likely behaviour. Soil classification sets out to place the soil being examined into one of a limited number of families from which we can assign particular soil properties and behaviours. Therefore, a good knowledge of soil classification is essential when selecting the most appropriate soil type for a given construction project. The formal soil classification process starts in the laboratory by taking a disturbed soil sample and subjecting it to a particle distribution analysis by pouring dry soil into a nest of sieves the largest sieve on top and the lower sieves getting progressively smaller as shown. The results are plotted on a graph and from this the engineer can infer typical behaviours of the soil. For example, soil A has 50% clay sized particles and as a result is unlikely to provide the necessary free draining properties required for its use as a sub base material in a roadway. Soil B, on the other hand, has no clay sized particles and is likely to allow any penetrating surface water to quickly drain away from the road pavement. It will also act as a capillary break between the pavement and subgrade. By the way, can you think of a construction project where soil A would be preferred over soil B and explain why? If you were looking carefully, you may have noticed that the smallest sieve size has an opening of 63 microns or 0.063 millimeters. How then do we determine the tail end of the grading curve for the silt and clay sized particles? Well, this is accomplished by undertaking a sedimentation test using the pipette or hydrometer methods. The principle of the sedimentation test is based on Stokes' law. In the pipette method, discrete samples of the soil and water suspension are extracted at a depth of 100 mm from the graduated cylinder. This is done at specific time intervals after the mixture has been agitated. During each time interval, the larger diameter soil particles will settle faster than the smaller diameter particles. And using Stokes' law, we can determine the percentage silt and percentage clay present. The particle distribution curve is also used to determine the effective grain size D10, the uniformity coefficient and the coefficient of curvature as shown. These are useful parameters in assistant decision making. For example, in soils having less than 20% silt and clay sized particles, its permeability K can be estimated using Hazen's empirical relationship, where D10 is input in millimetres. We can also tell if the soil is well graded from its uniformity coefficient. Finally, if a soil has no silt or clay sized particles, that is, it is a coarse grained soil, then no further testing is necessary and its classification can be completed by determining its family from the following table. If however the soil contains silt and clay then additional tests known as the Atterberg limits must be performed to complete the classification. The Atterberg limits are simply moisture contents at which the soil changes consistency or moves from one state to the next. There are three Atterberg limits, the liquid limit WL, the plastic limit WP and the shrinkage limit WS. These moisture contents define when a soil transitions from being a liquid to a plastic and finally a brittle material as it dries. The liquid and plastic limits are commonly used in practice and from these we can define the plastic index IP. By comparing the natural moisture content against these 
we can determine if the soil in situ is likely to be soft, that is, close to the liquid limit, or firm, that is, close to the plastic limit. This is a useful piece of information when considering foundation options. The laboratory tests to determine the liquid and plastic limits are discussed in most soil mechanics books and will not be considered further in this video. To conclude then on the classification of soil containing silts and clays, also known as fine grained soils, we plot the liquid limit against the plastic index using Casagrande's chart. If the results plot above the A line, we have a clay designated by the letter C. Results falling below the A line indicate the soil is a silt designated by the letter M. The second letter following C or M indicates the degree of plasticity of the soil and this ranges from CL or ML for low plasticity materials to extreme plasticity materials in CE or ME soil types. The U line is included in this plot as it defines the validity of the results. That is, if data plots above the U line, the Atterberg limit tests should be redone.